Two Belfast residents are accused of mistreating animals in their care. Good afternoon, I'm Susan Farley. A Bucksport man was arrested after allegedly leading police on a short car chase that turned into a fight. And a new road safety law is expanding to help drivers who are pulled over on the side of the road. Thank you for joining us. We'll have more on these and other stories coming up. First, let's check in with meteorologist Devin Biggs. Devin. Hey Susan, happy Monday afternoon. So we've had some clouds. The rain is thankfully out of here now. We're just seeing a few returns on the radar, but I don't think that's anything to get too worried about, though. We will stay dry for the rest of the day with maybe some piece of sunshine as we had throughout the afternoon period as well. Let's zoom things out. The area low pressure is moving away pretty quickly, taking the clouds and any moisture in the atmosphere with it. So we're working on getting this out of here. There's a few small chances for rain in the forecast coming up later on in the northern parts of the state. I'll explain when coming up later on. But in the short term, no, the clouds will be getting out here later on we'll be under a mostly clear sky later on tonight this will allow some frost and some freeze conditions to develop and apparently according to future cast even some fog further off towards the north and west by tuesday morning as for the wind not a huge deal at all though out of the northwest at around 5 to 11 miles an hour in a few spots maybe a few higher gusts up to 20 miles an hour at times we'll see that back off later on tonight and then by tomorrow the winds will start to pick up especially by tuesday afternoon so for today we're going to be under a party cloudy skies we'll get, get some of these clouds out of here during the afternoon and we'll be breezy with highs in the lower 50s the north wind getting up to around 20 miles per hour by tonight lower 30s mostly clear a frost and freeze possible in a few spots with the wind overall looking nice and calm and for tomorrow upper 50s lots of sunshine warmer too southwest wind at around 5 to 10 miles per hour hourly forecast for the rest of the afternoon period showing a partly cloudy sky temperatures in the 50s your full five day forecast is coming up susan Thank you, Devin. Two Belfast residents are accused of mistreating animals in their care. Krista Sweetland and Robert DeBeck are both 24 years old. They were arrested Friday and are facing 13 counts of cruelty to animals. According to the Belfast Police Department, someone reported earlier this month that numerous animals being kept at a home on Acorn Road were being abused. As a result of that investigation, 13 animals were seized last week, including cats, dogs and puppies. Some are said to be in critical condition are being cared for by a veterinarian. At last report, Sweetland and DeBeck were being held on $2,500 cash bail. They're being scheduled to be arraigned on December 1st. There are still few details about an alleged shooting in Tremont. State police were called to a home on Cross End Road early Sunday morning. A man told authorities his roommate was firing a gun inside the home and he escaped by to a nearby store to call for help. The man says the suspect fired shots into the ceiling, window and at his vehicle. No one was injured and the suspect was eventually arrested. We expect to learn more information about that situation today. A Clinton man is accused of sexually assaulting a child under the age of 12. 37 year old Christopher Connors was arrested Friday at his home in Clinton following what police are calling an extensive months long investigation. Connors has been charged with gross sexual assault of a minor, a class A felony charge. According to the Clinton Police Department, Connors initially refused to answer the door but was taken into custody without incident. Connors is being held at the Kennebec County Jail with a bail of $100,000. Police from several departments formed a Holden Mobile Home Park Saturday for an arrest of a Herman man. David Ledford has more. The Holden Police Department executed an arrest warrant for domestic violence assault Saturday. 36-year-old Whitney Bryant of Herman was arrested at a residence on Lloyd Lane in Holden's Cedar Haven Mobile Home Park. Bryant reportedly refused to exit the residence at first, but was taken into custody without incident. He is now facing several charges. He's been staying here at this residence in violation of a protection from abuse order, and we have arrested him already previously for violating that order. The charges right now are uh, domestic violence assault, which in this case is a felony, um, violation of a protection order, violation of conditional release, and obstructing the report of a crime. Holden police were assisted by the Maine State Police Tactical Team, the Brewer Police Department, and the Penobscot County Sheriff's Office. Officials say the heavy police presence was to ensure the safety of the community. There were some concerns of some violence, especially given the prior domestic violence situation, and uh, we just wanted to be safe and keep everybody safe and we're a small department so we wanted to make sure that we had enough resources. Bryant was taken to the Penobscot County Jail. In Holden, David Ledford, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News.
A Bucksport man was arrested in East Millinocket after allegedly leading police on a short car chase that turned into a fight. According to East Millinocket Police, shortly before noon on Friday, a car was observed driving recklessly on Poplar Street in Millinocket. The operator of the vehicle did not pull over after lights were flashed. It continued to evade officers on residential streets, at one point doing a U-turn and driving directly at the officers. The car eventually came to a stop in the area of the sports field near Granite Street School. During the arrest, 27-year-old Devin O'Brien and the officer actually got into a physical altercation. The officer sustained multiple injuries. A nearby resident came out of their home to help subdue O'Brien, who had gained control of the officer's taser and was attempting to grab the officer's firearm. With the help of the resident, O'Brien was taken into custody. It was found that he had a blood alcohol level of almost two times the legal limit. The officer was treated at the hospital for injuries sustained in the fight. O'Brien was transported to the Penobscot County Jail. He's being charged with eluding, refusing to submit to arrest, assault on an officer, driving to endanger, operating after suspension, three or more priors, operating under the influence and other charges. Two people were taken to the emergency room after a rollover crash near Orono. Officials responded to a single vehicle accident on I-95 just after 3 p.m. Sunday afternoon. Those who responded to the scene are asking drivers to pay attention to weather conditions when out on the road and to slow down. It's a good reminder uh, with all the rain on the roadway, just be careful, slow down. Uh, you know, DOT has the signs up saying that there's a potential for hydroplaning. So just be careful, uh, drive with caution and slow down. Both occupants, occupants made it out of the vehicle reportedly receiving minor injuries. The cause of that crash is still under investigation. A new road law expanding to help drivers who were pulled over on the side of the road. Under current law, main drivers are required to slow down and move over when they see first responders, emergency vehicles or tow trucks on the side of the road. However, that law is being expanded to include any disabled vehicle with hazard lights on. During National Move Over Day on Saturday, police, officials and AAA of Northern New England came together to raise awareness for the roadway safety ahead of the law going into effect. This is a public issue that all of us need to work on. It's, there are too many deaths on the highways, too many people killed or injured, and they're preventable. We have had troopers that have been hit while conducting traffic stops on the side of the road. Uh, I've come close many times where vehicles have almost hit me when they've been driving by. We're just asking the motorists to pay attention and be aware of that and be considerate of that. And with the new law that goes into effect, to give that same consideration to any vehicle that's pulled over. In addition to the new rule, technology is being used in some emergency vehicles to help with the issue. With this system, the drivers can receive real-time digital alerts when an emergency vehicle is nearby so they can slow down and move over. The updated move over law will go into effect this Wednesday. Coming up on ABC 7 News at noon, dozens of Mainers gathered in Bangor to protest the violence between Israel and Palestine. We've got details when we return. Maine has the best shipbuilders in the world. But to compete, we need reliable and affordable energy. That's why we're voting no. No on question three. It will cost Mainers billions and increase costs for families and businesses like Bath Ironworks. Like Bath Ironworks. And the politicians, they're not even required to have an operations plan when they take over. We'd never do our job without a plan. Please vote no on question three. It's a bad idea for Maine. With AAA insurance, by bundling our home and auto policies, we saved over $450. And we were shocked at the savings. When we switched to AAA auto insurance and bundled our policies, we were able to save over $400 every year. Switch to AAA insurance today, and you could save an average of $483 on auto insurance. Compare that to State Farm, GEICO, even Allstate. Call now for your free AAA full picture quote to find out how much you could save. Well, my passion is hang gliding. I've been doing it for over 30 years, and it's like flying. I mean, it's like everything you always dreamed about. AAA insurance helps us save more. And do more. The savings from AAA insurance has allowed me to pursue my passion of making jewelry. It's great to have a little bit of extra cash to do something that you love. To find out how much you could save by switching to AAA Insurance, call 866-460-1310 for your free AAA full picture quote today. You'll be glad you did.
With harsh main winters and winding main roads, collisions can happen. But what can you do to make your vehicle look like new again? Just go to Maine Collision Center in Bangor. New owners, Sean and Kim Sullivan, and their exceptional technicians and team members provide a certified full-service repair facility for auto collision repairs, even fixes for scratches and dents. And Maine Collision Center works directly with insurance companies to promptly process your claim. If you're going to get it fixed, get it fixed right at Maine Collision Center. I got hurt in a car accident, and the insurance company wants me to settle for way less than I deserve. Don't get burned by the insurance company. Fight fire with fire. Call the twos. We'll turn up the heat on the insurance company. We'll make them pay you all the money you deserve. I fought fire with fire and called the twos. Lowry and Associates got me $150,000 for my car accident. Now that's hot. We win for you. If you're hurt in an accident, what do you do? Call 2 2 2 22 22 you're watching ABC7 Bangor. Man overboard incidents are one of the leading causes of death among the First Coast Guard District Commercial Fishing Fleet. The U.S. Coast Guard Sector Northern New England is commencing their annual Operation Safe 8, conducting commercial fishing vessel safety boardings with an emphasis on safety gear and training. Recent safety data from the U.S. Coast Guard shows that over the last 10 years, there have been 41 man overboard reports, 23 of those resulting in deaths of commercial fishermen in northern New England alone. Coast Guard members will be conducting these boardings on fishermen and commercial boats to make sure they're in compliance with survival regulations equipped with emergency position indication radio beacon, proper vessel stability, and more. As Israel continues to be under attack from Hamas, dozens of Mainers gathered in Maine to protest the violence between Israel and Palestine. A Grace Blanchard has the details. A grassroots coalition of Mainers from all across the state gathered at Pierce Memorial Park in Bangor for a Save Gaza rally. Uh, the second that we've done since the recent uh, events that have taken place, um, and it's uh, important that we keep continuing to show up and demand peace in Palestine. Justice. Organizer Brendan Davison says the violence overseas has resulted in what he described as a humanitarian crisis for the people of Palestine. These people are starving, they are suffering under the Israeli bombs, and it, this does not end soon. More people will die, and this death toll is only going to climb even higher. My mom is from the Middle East. Uh, she's a third generation Palestinian. And um, in the same day, uh, she, uh, she lost 17 of her family members. Several main political leaders have spoken in support of Israel's efforts to defend themselves from the attacks by Hamas. This is a terrorist group, and we must do all that we can to support Israel in its quest to eliminate Hamas. Many protesters emphasize that they are not rallying in support of Hamas. We all deserve to have a place where we do not have to live in fear of oppression or being killed just for who we are. That extends to both, you know, Jews and Muslims, Palestinians, Christians, everyone. That extends to everyone. In Bangor, Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. There are countless stories to tell from the Beirut bombing, but some of those stories were left unfinished. That's where former U.S. Marine Lance Corporal Kevin Perry comes in. Doug Banks spoke to the Oranville resident who's living up to the Beirut Veterans of America's motto, the first duty is to remember. Just outside his front door, Kevin Perry has been walking across Route 16 since 2009 to his plot of old forested land where you'll find over 30 trails dedicated to members of the U.S. Marine Corps who served in Beirut. I'm not sure why I did it. There's a saying that um, a person dies twice. They die when they actually physically stop living, and they die a second time when, when everybody, nobody talks about them again. On that Sunday morning in October of 1983, Perry was at the U.S. Embassy getting ready to start his day. The Marine rushed in and said they just leveled the the Marine Corps barracks or the, or the headquarters company. And I said, was there a lot of people hurt? And he goes, no, it's leveled, it's on the ground. For the next three weeks, he served as an external guard for the embassy. Anybody's lucky to live up into adulthood or, or even get to be an older man like me. Today, he walks the trails he cleared himself, telling stories, some of which end too soon. 
and others he hopes continue writing. He was my company commander, and he was killed in the October 23rd bombing. Doc needed to be preaching to us to quit smoking cigarettes. Sergeant Major Douglas was our highest enlisted rank in our battalion. Some of Perry's goals are for other Marines to share their own stories, like this one of a Machias native who was serving in Beirut as well on that day. He also survived. Perry also wants to increase support for veterans organizations, helping to ensure that the service and sacrifice of all veterans is remembered and honored. They died before they should have, and they never had the chance to have kids and grandkids and, and live their life. And well, those are the people that to me are important. In Ornville, Doug Banks, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. After the break, we'll have the latest on the struggle to find a new Speaker of the House. We'll be right back. There are so many fun things to do in Maine. Now you can enjoy more for less. Check out Half Off Fun from FoxBangor.com. Healing Hands Massage in Hamden provides professional massage services tailored specifically for our clients. Whether you're looking for relief from chronic pain, stiffness, or just want to treat yourself to a day of relaxation, Healing Hands Massage is the place for you. There's a limited supply available. It's on sale right now. Save with Half Off Fun from FoxBangor.com. Join us every Friday this season as we celebrate the return to the gridiron with the most highlights, reaction, and analysis of your favorite teams. Catch Sports Blitz Friday at 11 on ABC7. Sports Blitz brought to you by Coastal Auto Parts, your local Napa Auto Parts dealer with 29 locations owned and operated by a main family that cares. And by Dorsey Furniture, Route 1A Holden, where you'll find furniture that's in stock and ready for delivery. This is not just laundry. This is laundry that's one and done. This is the ultra-fast combo laundry machine that does both washing and drying cycles. This is revolutionizing laundry. This is GE Profile. Available now at your local at-home furniture appliance and bedding location located in Lincoln and Dover Foxcroft. Stop in today and see what we can do to make you feel at home. Dependability isn't a piece of hardware. It's peace of mind. It's the confidence you get from knowing that every time you get behind the wheel, you're in a vehicle that's capable and reliable. Dependability isn't driving just any brand. It's driving the number one most dependable mass market brand three years in a row by J.D. Power. Lease a new 2023 Forte LXS for $1.99 a month. Did you send him this text? Yes. Odd. Did a single mom's desperate times. I was very concerned. I offered to help her out. Call for desperate measures. As soon as a man feels like they have power over you, they can start demanding things. You mean the fact that he paid your rent? Yes. But well, you're texting him that you're prepared to become an escort to married men for money. Next Judge Judy. Monday at 5, only on ABC7. Now to the ongoing war between Israel and Hamas. The Biden administration is asking Israel to delay their expected ground incursion into Gaza in order to allow more time for the release of hostages and to get critical aid into the region. All this is Israel steps up its airstrikes in the region. ABC's Ike Jachi is in Washington with the latest. This morning, Israeli Defense Forces stepping up its attacks on terrorist targets, striking a refugee camp in Gaza, killing 40 Palestinians, including women and children, according to the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry. Elsewhere, Israeli fighter jets striking a mosque in the West Bank, which Israel says thwarted an imminent terror attack. At least two people were killed. This drone video showing buildings pulverized. A Palestinian journalist says he scooped up these two wounded toddlers, rushing them to a hospital. ABC's Matt Gutman reports what happens next in Gaza will unfold in three stages. The first will comprise the most intense fighting. That's the invasion of the Gaza Strip. The second stage is cleanup operations, finding remaining Hamas cells and weaponry, destroying them. The third stage is rehabilitation, restoring essential services in Gaza, perhaps a government. 
The Biden administration urging Israel to delay a ground invasion in Gaza in order to allow time for the release of more hostages. Israel says Hamas is holding at least 212 hostages, including some Americans. I'm scared because, what, I, because what does that mean? I don't know where is my daughter. Nobody know. On Friday, Hamas releasing a mother and daughter from the Chicago area. Judith and Natalie Rahman in a deal brokered by Qatar. Meanwhile, the humanitarian crisis inside Gaza is growing. People are running out of food, water, medicine, and fuel. 15 aid trucks arriving in Gaza over the weekend, slowly trickling in. Still, hundreds of additional trucks packed with critical aid waiting at Egypt's Rafah border. There are fears the conflict could widen. The U.S. now moving a second carrier strike group and missile defense system into the region. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. The drama continues on Capitol Hill as Republicans struggle to find a candidate who can get the 217 votes needed to become Speaker of the House. Republicans will be back at it again tonight, starting from square one as they look to elect a new speaker. Here's ABC's M. Wynn. The field of candidates vying to become the next Speaker of the House is growing larger. After three failed votes on the House floor, conservative Jim Jordan was forced out of the race by his GOP colleagues who voted to remove him as the nominee. This is probably one of the most embarrassing uh, things I've seen because if we don't have a Speaker of the House, we can't govern. At least nine Republicans are now vying for the position, including House Majority Whip Tom Emmer, Representatives Byron Donalds, Kevin Hearn, and Mike Johnson. Emmer is seen as the immediate frontrunner, but he's disliked by Donald Trump's congressional allies after he was one of 64 House Republicans who voted to uphold Biden's electoral votes in 2021. Former Speaker Kevin McCarthy telling NBC. We need someone who understands how to do this job. He sets himself head and shoulders above all those others who want to run. We need to get him elected. This week. Despite McCarthy's support, it's not clear if the Minnesota Republican can secure the 217 votes he needs. Former Speaker Newt Gingrich telling Fox News Republicans should go in a room and not come out until they have a candidate who can win. Stay there, a very simple test. Can you get 217 votes? They shouldn't bring anybody out until they have 217. Without a House Speaker, no legislation can be brought to the floor, including the $100 billion foreign aid package President Biden requested, which includes funding for Israel and Ukraine. Republicans will hold a forum Monday evening behind closed doors, where they will hear from each candidate before an internal secret ballot Tuesday morning to select a candidate. A vote on the floor could come Tuesday afternoon. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. When we return, Devin Biggs has your five-day forecast. Ah, the McDonald's breakfast bagel sandwich. A fluffy egg, two slices of cheese, plus your choice of a steak patty, bacon, or sausage, all in a toasted bagel. Enjoy yours today. Join us every Friday this season as we celebrate the return to the gridiron with the most highlights, reaction, and analysis of your favorite team. Catch Sports Blitz Friday at 11 on ABC7. Sports Blitz brought to you by Coastal Auto Parts, your local Napa Auto Parts dealer with 29 locations owned and operated by a main family that cares. And by Dorsey Furniture, who 1A Holdings, where you'll find furniture that's in stock and ready for delivery. Some things are worth waiting for. Something reliable, something loyal, something long lasting. A six year warranty? Coyote's got that. One machine for all the dirty work? Count on Coyote. Coyote won't break your heart, and Whittemore and Sons got the deals that won't break the bank. So quit swiping and settling for less. Slide into Whittemore and Sons and be treated like family by a family who cares. 257 Waterville Road, Skowhegan. Every night is pizza night at Dragonfire Pizza from wings, salads, and sides to our specialty wood-fired pizzas. You'll find everything you need to satisfy any craving by the slice or by the pie. A little slice of heaven is waiting for you at Dragonfire Pizza, Mill Mall, Ellsworth. Hi, I'm Angelina Mucci. And I'm Andy Mucci of Family Fun Ball and Center. When we want to know the weather, we go to foxbangor.com. Celebrating our 50th anniversary year, Family Fun Bowling Center has 20 lanes of 10-pin bowling at its best. Ah, the McDonald's breakfast bagel sandwich. A fluffy egg, two slices of cheese, plus your choice of a steak patty, bacon, or sausage, all in a toasted bagel. Enjoy yours today.
The Maritime Academy has a hot new training facility they have dubbed the Fire Chief. Devin Dagnall takes us there. This is, this is state-of-the-art technology. So it's made for a combination of shoreside and shipboard firefighting. One of the most unique things in the state of Maine, I think. The Fire Chief is a four-story training facility located in Bucksport, designed to prepare Maine Maritime Academy students for any firefighting situation, whether on land or sea. Well, the simulations are made to simulate a, a regular shipboard fire. As the new vessels come out, newer technology, some of our props are made to emulate that. There's three different props. There's an engine room simulator prop, a sofa prop, and the third one is a galley fire or a kitchen fire prop. The fire chief's fires are all controlled and fueled by propane, which makes it far less less toxic than training methods of the past. These days, you know, we don't have houses we can burn anymore. So having facilities like this for a controlled environment to, to teach the new generation coming up gives them a good controlled way to start learning. Although the intention of the facility was to be used by MMA students, Chief Operating Officer Craig Johnson says the Academy is happy to welcome any fire departments or businesses throughout all of New England to train with their fire chief. It's a, it's a great chance for the state of Maine to partner with Maine Maritime Academy and the local fire departments. In Bucksport, Devin Dagnall, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Now let's check your full forecast with Devin Biggs. Devin? Alrighty, here we go. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Healing Hands Massage in Hampton, providing professional massage services tailored specifically for their clients. Stop by Healing Hands Massage today. You'll thank yourself later. Alrighty, here we go. So clouds developing out there now. We're going to start seeing some more sunshine during the afternoon period as well. And your rainfall is done. There's some moisture in the atmosphere, but I think we'll be okay. A lot of that won't hit the ground, if any of it at all. So we'll be okay in that regard. With a dry afternoon with a partly cloudy sky, as we zoom things out, that area of low pressure right about in here is moving away now. We have high pressure right behind it. That will allow frost and freeze conditions tonight. Maybe some fog in the northwestern parts of the state as well. And there's a lot of activity further off towards the west, so a lot of this will be tracking off towards the east. So some small chances of rain in our forecast, so uh, as a lot of that will hit the caribou area. So let's break all this down with future cast. So plenty of clouds on the way for us today. We'll see some of those break up during the afternoon period. A mostly clear sky expected tonight. Frost and freeze conditions as a result will occur. Some fog as well in the northwestern parts of the state through tomorrow morning. And then mainly a lot of sunshine throughout the day Tuesday. Maybe a few passing clouds during the afternoon period. And then by Tuesday night a mostly cloudy sky will be expected. Small chances for rain. Notice a lot of that though will hit the northern parts of the state as we head towards Wednesday morning. So throughout the next several days though, plenty of rain across parts of the Caribou area. At least between now and at least Sunday. Maybe up to three quarters of an inch of rain before we're all finished up. Maybe a little bit more further down to the south. Or I should say at least a little bit of rain further down to the south. A lot of it will be in the Caribou area further down to the south. Not so much of anything at all. So small chances in our viewing area today. Caribou will have the best opportunities for the rainfall. But also some gusty winds on the way reaching up to around 15 miles an hour at times during the afternoon period, possibly up to 20 miles per hour. Later on tonight, the winds really back off, allowing that radiational cooling to take place, which means it will cool off quickly. More wind tomorrow reaching up to 15 miles per hour in a few spots. So that forecast for today looks a little bit like this. A party cloudy sky overall will be breezy out there. Highs in the lower 50s at north wind getting up to around 20 miles per hour at times. Later on tonight, lower 30s, mostly clear frost and freeze conditions possible. Maybe some fog further off towards the north and west with the wind overall looking nice and calm. For tomorrow, upper 50s, lots of sunshine, warmer as well. Southwest wind at around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Here is a look at your five-day forecast brought to you by Healing Hands Massage. Slight chance for rain on Wednesday with highs in the lower 60s. We'll be partly cloudy and dry Thursday with highs in the lower 70s. 70s, the upper 60s for your Friday with a mostly cloudy sky. Thank you, Devin. That's all for ABC 7 News at noon. Thanks for watching. I'm Susan Farley. We'll see you this evening with Peter Dubois and Beth Jones on ABC 7 News at 6. Have a great afternoon.